Hi, Physics Boss Man coming back at you. A soccer player kicks a stationary ball at an angle of 15 degrees to the horizontal. A. What is the maximum height reached by the ball? And B. How far from the initial point does the ball land? Now we're also going to need the initial uh, velocity or the speed that the ball is kicked to answer this question. That's how you can do physics. Physics. A boss as you are created. You are created in God's image. To be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue. Okay, so just looked it up and the uh, speed that the ball was kicked at is 15 meters per second. So as we draw our picture, let's go ahead and start with our coordinate axes, XY coordinate system, and it's convenient uh, to start the ball at the origin. And so we go ahead and we note that the initial velocity is 15 meters per second and that the angle is also happens to be the same number 15 but the units are degrees and we know how this goes in a projectile motion we can just go ahead and rough it out here the uh, the ball goes up it reaches some peak height and then it comes back down to ground so we're going to go ahead and call this y max and the x coordinate where it hits the ground we're going to denote as x final okay so let's identify the general principle of physics now it's it's often tempting just to categorize it when we're thinking about the uh the problem and the category is is projectile motion but projectile motion itself is not a general principle of physics so we want to think about the actual general principles here. And when you can ignore air resistance, when the only force acting is gravity, then the general principles involved in projectile motion are separation of variables. And what does separation of variables mean? That means that we can treat the horizontal motion in the x direction, the way we set up our axes, as independent of the vertical motion or the y motion so that's the general principle of physics known as separation of variables a couple other general principles here that are important is that you have the constant g in the y motion right and this is the principle uh, that galileo discovered relative to free fall that in the absence of air resistance near the surface of the earth all objects accelerate downward at the 9.8 meters per second squared and then we have the constant x component of velocity in the horizontal motion and this is the idea that because there aren't any forces acting no forces are acting in the horizontal direction that the horizontal velocity is constant okay so now to develop God has crowned you, 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 with glory and honor. Honor to rule, rule over his creation, creation, creation. Our, our, our plan of attack, and this is a little more involved procedure than you may be used to in some of the simpler problems. But as we mature in our problem solving skills, uh, we, we'll come to appreciate the ability to, to do sort of bullet point plans that are more than two or three bullet points. We're going to compute the x and y components of initial velocity. We're going to use the vy equation to compute t up, I'm calling it. That's the amount of time you spend going up uh, before you reach the, uh, the peak. Use uh, T up to find the peak height of uh, Y max. Okay, so those three steps really just took us through the first half of the problem finding Y max. So now uh, we're still developing here. We need to finish the problem and find uh, the, the height. So then we're going to use y max to find I'm going to call it t down right because the ball really its motion can be connected into two different phases as far as its vertical motion goes it's coming up 
and then it's coming down. So use Y max to find T down. Then the total flight time is equal to T up plus T down. And then finally, we can use VX initial and T flight to compute X final. Now that's a lot of moving parts, but we've got it all mapped out. We're thinking about it carefully. So let's just go ahead now and execute our plan or evaluate. Science is a gift from God. To help us master nature. But sin added thorns and thistles. Requiring the sweat of your brow to succeed. Okay, so to, to evaluate the problem, we first compute the Okay, to evaluate the problem, we first compute the x and y components of initial velocity. So the x component of initial velocity is just the magnitude of the initial velocity times the cosine of the angle. So uh, substituting the numbers in there is 15 meters per second times the cosine of 15 uh, degrees. And that works out to be 14.49 meters per second. And the y component of initial velocity is similar. It's the initial velocity times the sine of the launch angle. So that's 15 meters per second times the sine of 15 degrees. And that works out to be 3.88 meters per second. And so now we're thinking about how much time you spend going up. So anytime something is launched upward uh, vertically, when it gets to the top, what's its velocity? Well, the y component of velocity at the top is always zero. Why? Because if the y component were still positive, it wouldn't be at the top yet. It'd still be going up. And if the y component was negative, it wouldn't be at the top anymore. It'd be coming down. So at the top of a projectile's flight, the y component of its velocity is zero. So vy is equal to vy initial minus gt, and we set this equal to zero, and then the time that we solve for will end up to be the uptime. So a couple steps of algebra here. We subtract vy initial from both sides. So now we got a negative sign on both sides. We can multiply through by negative one. And now we divide both sides by G. So T up, the time you spend going up is equal to VY initial over G or 3.88 meters per second divided by 9.8 meters per second squared. Uh, punch in the numbers there, that works out to be 0.3 nine six and let's take a little care with the units because the units are meters per second but then they're divided by meters per second squared and when you divide fractions it's like multiplying by the reciprocal so the meters cancels out and one of the seconds cancels out so we're expecting units of time of seconds for the time and that is indeed of what we end up getting as we're expecting. So the, the time to go up is this point uh, three nine six uh, seconds. All right, so now we can keep moving forward here and we can use the time up to compute the peak y because y of t equals y naught plus v initial y times the time minus one half gt squared and that's just the coordinate equation for the y coordinate uh, for projectile motion. So this works out, this is zero because we put our origin at the starting point. So it's uh, 3.88 meters per second times the t up, which is the 0.396 seconds. And now minus the 1 half gt squared uh, one half g is 4.9 meters per second squared, and then the time is 0 0.396 
seconds and that quantity gets squared. So let's think about the units here before we go ahead and do the numbers, your calculator do the numbers simply. Meters per second times seconds is going to be meters in that term. Meters per second squared times seconds squared is also going to be meters in that term. So we end up with 0 0.768 uh, meters for the peak height in Y. Alright, so now referring back to our plan here, uh, we need to use the peak in Y to find T down. And this is because once an object reaches the uh, apex of its flight or its peak, its time to fall back to the earth is just as if you taken a stationary object and dropped it from this height. So finding T down is just asking the question, how long does it take an object to fall uh, 0.768 meters? So let's uh, sort of work a, a, a mini problem there. Learning physics often requires prayer as we submit to Jesus Christ as risen, as risen King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So, how long does it take an object to fall from that height? Well, thinking about the uh, coordinate equation of motion, uh, there's, there's no initial velocity in this case because it's as if you're starting it from that instant where it's at the top and dropping it. So it's uh, zero is your final height. It's y initial minus one half gt squared. But now y initials is 0.768. So subtract the y initial from both sides. It's negative y initial equals negative one half gt squared. Solve for t. t is equal to the square root of 2y over g. Uh, a y initial here, by the way. And so you go ahead and plug that into your handy dandy calculator and you find that the time on the way down is also equal to 0 0.396 seconds. And that's not really a coincidence that it's the same as the time to go up because when you're going up and you're falling back down at the same height, it so happens that in the absence of air resistance, your time going down. Uh, will be equal to your time going up. So now the T flight is the T up plus the T down and that's equal to 0 0.792 seconds for the total flight time. We reign by surrender. We reign by surrendering to Jesus and praying for our daily bread, which includes success, success in our schoolwork. God will answer and lighten our yoke and the impact of the thorns and thistles in our labor. All right, now to finally finish it off, uh, X final, in the case of projectile motion, it's X initial plus V initial X times the flight time. Well, X initial was zero because we put the origin at the place where we kicked the ball from. And so this is just uh, V initial X is 14.49 meters per second and then times the flight time, 0 0.792 seconds. Meters per second times seconds is meters, so your units are meters. And you do the multiplication and it's 11.48 meters uh, in terms of our final answer for the uh, horizontal distance. Okay, so now to assess the problem, units. Are the units what we expected? Yes, we did a careful job as we went along. So, you know, our times were all in seconds, our maximum height was in meters, and our distance was in meters. What about our signs? Yes, it's a positive maximum height and it's a positive uh, maximum distance as was expected. What about the magnitude? Now, is there an independent way to double check, you know, the magnitude of the answer that we got here? And yes, there is. Uh, somewhere in your textbook, there's what's called the range formula. So if you have a special case of projectile motion, where the object begins and ends at the same height, 
That's the condition that satisfies the range formula. So the range is equal to x final in this case. How far does it go? And it's just b initial squared times the sine of 2 theta divided by g. So that would be 15 meters per second quantity squared times the sine of 15 well, actually, it's the sine of 2 times 15 degrees, so it's the sine of 30 degrees over the 9.8 meters per second squared. So you do all that in your handy-dandy calculator, and you get 11.48 meters, which you compare with the range that we computed with an independent method, and it agrees. So our assessment checks out for units, for sine, and for magnitude. Wow, it seems like the physics class has just stepped on the accelerator pedal and was getting harder. So let's remember to pray and ask the Lord Jesus for help. Oh, Lord God, we confess that uh, we feel weak and we don't feel good at physics. Uh, Lord God, we pray that you'd help us in Jesus' name. You say your power is made perfect through our weakness, but that usually comes by us humbling ourselves and asking for help. So we pray that you'd help us. Help us not to be afraid. Help us not to be lazy. Sharpen our wisdom, sharpen our skill, sharpen our insight, sharpen our ability at physics, we pray. And help us to remember to pray for our daily bread every day when we're doing our homework, and especially on test day. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Written in the Word, in the good, good Word, is a message from our God, gonna tell you all about how to get to the kingdom, the good life. Word in the good, good word is a message from our God, gonna tell you all about how to get to the kingdom, the good life, oh I love Jesus.